welcome back everybody i hope everybody had a good couple of days off um we are going to get into another weapon detective video i have said on the other videos in the past i really like this channel i like the content that they do um i even watch i've i've watched a couple of their videos actually off the channel i just i just like them um like I said, I hope everybody had a good couple of days off. I went and saw my parents and uh, put together a little bit of a uh, firearm video while I was there. I talked about doing a little bit of a show and tell thing whenever I went down there, and I did. Uh, I haven't edited it or put it together in any real way, but it is recorded. There's a, I'll put a picture in here so you can see kind of generally what I'm going over and what I'm talking about. But I'll try to get that out as soon as I possibly can. I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to piece it together and, and what I'm going to get into on it. Um, I have a whole couple of different videos that I'm looking at. One that is I'm about to get out that's on the 30 Years War, I believe. It was sent to me on Discord. This one was also sent to me on Discord. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the classes, but let's go ahead and jump in. The Speaker and its successor, Speaker 2, aka Nor Shipping Classes, were undoubtedly one of the sexiest fast attack craft of their time. Even though these surface combatants never saw action, they are highly praised by naval enthusiasts. Today, we are investigating the Speaker and Nor Shipping Classes, the legendary fast attack crafts of the Baltic. The Spica and the North Shipping classes are the symbols of the change in the Swedish Navy. So one vessel of each class is in the listing of historic ships in Sweden and preserved in seaworthy conditions. They were the children of the new naval concept of the Swedish Navy. During the 1950s, the tension between the Western and Eastern blocs constantly raised. Sweden had to reorganize its armed forces to adapt to the new situation and protect its policy of neutrality. So, on February 4, 1958, the Swedish Riksdag passed the Defense Act of 1958, which prioritized the Army and the Air Force. Sweden reduced the Navy's share in the defense budget from 18 to 12 percent. The major surface combatants would be gradually replaced by the fast attack crafts in the anti surface warfare mission, and the submarines would become the backbone of anti submarine warfare missions. But the existing vessels were insufficient for the new mission definition. Based on the experiences that came from the Pleiad class, the Swedish naval staff required a new fast attack craft which would have better weaponry, electronics, protection and machinery. And we've talked about this transition uh, through a whole couple of videos on the channel. They're right up next to a potential adversary and something could could happen basically at the drop of a hat. The Baltic is the kind of central area for this whole thing. That for everything that's going on in this region, the Baltic is kind of the epicenter for it. So they kind of take the German route here where, you know, the Germans see in World War One and World War II, in World War One it's a little bit different because they actually have some some great ships in World War I. Um, but what they realize is they can't compete with the British Navy. So what's the what's the alternative? Well, they turn towards submarines. They're they're cheaper to make and, and manufacture. And also the the loss of one versus the loss of say uh, one of the old dreadnoughts or something is just not even it's not even comparable. It's you know, you really can't lose those big ships. Countries hated it. It's part of the reason why in, you know, in these big blow-ups, they, they never really get their, their navy out fighting other navies. Neither side really wants to lose these ships. Uh, I've talked about this before. It kind of leads to the entire shit show that was Gallipoli in World War One. But submarines are just... 
if you're not going to spend an absurd amount of money on the Navy, submarines are kind of a, an easy way to sort of balance the, the naval power. The Plaid class boats had three 2,500 horsepower Daimler Benz MB518 diesels. Later, the Swedish engineers modified the engines and increased the power output to 3,000 horsepower. But it was still insufficient to answer the new requirements of the Swedish naval staff. Also, the wooden hull of the Plaid class, which was a standard for torpedo boats in these years, could not meet the criteria for the protection level. So. Marin Plant 60 was added, which initiated the commissioning of a new and highly capable submarine and torpedo boat. In 1961, Sweden opened an international tender and evaluated British, German and Norwegian fast attack crafts. Yet, none of them could offer a boat suitable for the Swedish Navy's requirements. Still, the new Jaguar-class design of the Luesen was promising except for its wooden hull and diesel engines. This German shipbuilder sold the construction drawings of the boat to Sweden. The Swedish naval engineers used these drawings to develop the Spica class, which would become the template for the subsequent Swedish fast attack craft. Unlike the wooden hull Diagua class, the Spica class, which shared the same hull design, had a steel hull and gas turbines. The first boat of the class, HMS Spica, was launched on April 26, 1966 and commissioned on August 26th of the same year. Sweden built six vessels in this class and named them after stars. The last one, HMS Vergo, was commissioned on March 22, 1968. The Spica class was one of the most modern torpedo boats of its time. It was revolutionary in various areas, especially hull construction, drive concept and armament. The hull was of steel and the superstructure was of aluminum alloys. Using metals made the boat heavy, which increased stability. Also, the location of the bridge and operations room, positioned at the rolling and stamping center, improved stability further. Thus, even at high sea states, the Spica class offered high comfort for the crew and a stable platform for the weapon's accuracy. Another innovation compared to the previous German and Swedish counterparts was that the Spica class used wire-guided torpedoes instead of unguided ones so the boat could redirect them even after the launch, which increased the probability of a hit. Also, thanks to its highly modern fire control system for that time, which consisted of a fire control radar and a relatively primitive computer, the Spica class could calculate precise fire control solutions for the torpedoes. The 533mm wire controlled Torpedo 61 torpedo had 45 knots speed and 24 km range. Its warhead was 250 kilograms. All six torpedo tubes were rigidly mounted on a slightly angled position from the longitudinal axis. There were no spare torpedoes on board. The four torpedo tubes at the aft could be removed. So you've got basically a six shooter. Moved to accommodate rails for laying sea mines and throwing depth charges. Still, the boat had limited anti submarine warfare capability since it had no sonar. The 57mm Bufosh SAK Mark I gun of the Spica class had a rate of fire of 200 rounds per minute. Okay, wait, it had no sonar, but it had the abramp there for the depth charges. So that's ba like, if I'm understanding that correctly, it's basically for a if shit hits the fan sort of thing. Because you're not going to be able to catch it, you know... It basically, if you if you see it, if you run into one or if you get attacked by one, is, is that correct? That seems like kind of that setup. It's not, it's not its job and it's not even looking for them. But if some, if one was to come across, you know, where the ship was going, it would at least have the ability to, to put down depth charges. And with the mine laying, I don't know if there's a Swedish ship or, or, vessel that we've looked at that didn't have the capability to to lay mines do they all have the capability to to lay mines and a maximum range of 17,000 meters later it was replaced by the sak mark ii this variant had a rate of fire of 220 rounds per minute and faster target acquisition capability and it could fire new types of ammunition there were six racks for the 103mm illumination rockets on the turret. 
The plan in the 1980s to replace the torpedo tubes with anti-ship missiles was never realized. The Spica class could be sealed airtight and a filter system was cleaning the air. So it had NBC protection. The gas turbines had a high power output which gave the Spica class a top speed of over 40 knots. Yet they were not reliable enough and were often experiencing malfunction. For this reason, two of three gas turbines were running during the course in general use. The crew was activating the third one during the attack. The boat had six watertight compartments and could float even if two adjacent ones were flooded. Despite its highly advanced design, the Spica was still a torpedo boat. In the same years, the main nemesis, the Soviet Navy, began to commission Komar and Asa-class missile boats. So, we may say, in one regard, the Spica class was obsolete since the beginning. The service life of the Spica class boats is uneventful. They never participated in any major incidents. HMS Castor and HMS Sirius were decommissioned in 1985 and the rest in 1989. Still, HMS Spica is preserved as a museum ship. HMS Spica is still fully operational. She also makes trips during the summer, which can be booked. According to Jane's major... That's actually pretty awesome. ...major warships, the complement of the Spica class was 30 people. It had a length of 42.5 meters, a beam of 7.1 meters and a drought of 1.6 meters. The boat's standard displacement was 200 tons, while its fully loaded displacement was 235 tons. Three 4,500 horsepower Rolls-Royce Proteus 1282 gas turbines provided a maximum speed of 40 knots. Based on the experience gained with the Spica class, Sweden decided to design a new boat called the Spica II class in the early 1970s. Later, this class was renamed as Norrköping class. The first vessel of the class, HMS Norrköping, was launched on November 16, 1972 and commissioned on May 11, 1973. The Swedish Navy took 12 Norrköping class boats into service until 1976. That's, that looks like something you might see out on a lake somewhere, just, you know, slightly bigger. The minor changes from the previous Spica class. The North Shipping class was 1.1 meters longer than its predecessor. Its standard displacement was 190 tons, while its fully loaded displacement was 230 tons. It had an improved air intake, enabling the ships to reach up to 42 knot speed. The initial armament of the Norshopping class was the same as the Spica class. It had one 57mm Bufosh SAK Mark I gun and six 533mm torpedo tubes. Right, like the the uh, those speedboats that you'll see are like super skinny and they almost like round to, you know, they come together at a tip at the very top, but they almost like round up into it. And I feel like that's, from from the front, that's what these look like. Like that type of of coming together, rounding up, that when you see it from further back, it makes it look like just a big version of one of those one of those boats. But unlike the Spica class, the new boat had a domestically produced Saab 9 LV 200 Mark I. Oh man, I'm gonna have to cut <laughs> edit there. I just sat back down. Um, I heard there was a, a Somebody rang my doorbell and then was like beating on the door. It's dark here. It's not super late, but it's dark. And so I, I went to go look and I have neighbors who, uh, uh, elder man and woman, uh, the, the husband has a hard time getting around. Um, and he had fallen and she was, she was freaking out and, and couldn't get him up and, so anyway, she came over and, and asked for help, but yeah, so sorry, let's, let's jump back into this. The boat had been designed to allow the integration of future anti-ship missiles from the beginning. The Swedish Navy was one of the pioneers of ship-based anti-ship missiles. The Holland-class destroyer was the first major western surface combatant equipped with this weapon system. Also, the Swedish Navy had the Huggin missile boat. They had the Penguin missiles with a 34-kilometer range, 
whose Swedish designation was the Robot 12. The Swedish Navy, which had a deep-rooted ship-based anti-ship missile tradition, decided to replace the four aft torpedo tubes of the North Shopping class boats with the RBS-15s in the early 1980s. The trial was conducted on HMS PTO. The result was successful. So, Sweden converted all North Shopping class torpedo boats to missile boats between 1982 and 1985. The RBS-15 Mark I had a 200kg high-explosive blast pre-fragmented warhead and a range of 70 km. Yeah, I'm actually curious about this in particular. The, you know, because we did the RBS-15 just the other day. I'm curious about the progression of this particular anti-ship missile. Because obviously it's it's a different thing today. It's, you know, it's not what it was whenever it first came out. So I'm interested in, and I'll have to look some stuff up on what the progression of it was to get to, you know, where it is today. Its speed was Mach 0.8. Also, the Torpedo 61s were replaced by the Torpedo 613 torpedoes. The new one had a range of 30 kilometers. Like the Spica class, the North Shopping class was re-equipped with SAK Mark II gun. Since the RBS-15 offered twice the range of the Robot 12, the modernization also included the integration of long-range sea draft radar and the Maris 880 weapons control system. Thanks to the Maris 880, the North Shopping class had over-the-horizon engagement capability by receiving target data from helicopters. At first, like the Spica class, the North Shopping class boats had a pennant number that started with the letter T. This letter referred to the Swedish word Torped Batar, which means torpedo boat. Now, since the North Shopping class became a missile boat, the letter T was changed to R, the initial of the Swedish word for missile boat, Robot Bat. Between 1996 and 2000, Sweden modernized six vessels of this class to keep them in service until the Wisby class corvettes were commissioned. Yeah, those Visbys look awesome. The Maril 2000 replaced the Maris 880 weapons control system. Also, the boats received new advanced electronics. After the modernization, these six boats were redefined as the Easter class. When the Soviet Whiskey class submarine S363 was aground outside Karlskrona in October 1981, which is known as the U-137 incident, the interrogations of Soviet officers and diplomats were carried out on HMS Westerwick. Okay. This boat had monitored the large-scale Soviet exercise. So that that was in the Whiskey on the Rocks documentary. That actual ship was, or you know, it at least was like in the background of it. Ties is up at 81, out in the Baltic Sea one month ago. HMS Westerwick became the first decommissioned North Shopping class boat in 1997. As mentioned before, six vessels had been modernized to be kept in service until 2010. But due to economic reasons and changing threat perceptions, Sweden retired all boats by 2005. HMS Westerwick is preserved as a museum ship. In 2006, HMS Eastat was taken over by a non-profit association that handles maintenance and operation. So, she has been stripped off the HMS prefix. Eastat is still in seaworthy condition. Wait, it was taken over by a non-profit? Did they strip it of all the weapons and they're using it for, you know, something different like tours or, or whatever? Or did they just straight up sell it to to another group? I'm, I, I'm super curious about that. The Stockholm class Corvettes, which share the same hull design, were initially defined as the Spica 3 class. The Handalan class or Spica M class missile boats of the Royal Malaysian Navy are the modified variants of the North Shopping class. They were built in Sweden. Unlike their Swedish sisters, the Handalan class boats with bridge amidships have three MTU diesel engines, a fully loaded displacement of 240 tons, a length of 43.6 meters and a drought of 2.4 meters. They have one Bufosh 40mm L70 gun on the aft and Exoze MM38 anti-ship missiles. The Konchar class missile boats based on the North Shopping class were built in Yugoslavia. These boats have two diesel engines and two gas turbines. 
Initially, they carried two SSM-26 anti-ship missiles and two 57mm Bufosh SAK Mark I guns instead of one. Today, the Montenegrin Navy operates two Conchar-class vessels as patrol boats without missiles. Also, Shibenik in this class, which has the RBS-15 missiles, one 57mm Bufosh SAK Mark I gun and AK-630 close and weapon system is still serving in the Croatian Navy. Similarly, the Vilamos missile board of the Royal Danish Navy was based on the North Shopping class. Some viewers may claim that no naval ship can be a legend without combat achievements. But according to Sun Tzu, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. The Spica class and its that was pretty that was a pretty good way of framing that. Successor, the North Shopping class, successfully defended the Swedish coastlines for nearly 40 years. So we may say that they were legendary divas of the art of war. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares. That was a look at a, a couple of different um, of these faster torpedo boats, uh, you know, missile ships. There's sort of an interesting step in the evolution of the Swedish Navy, which, you know, this is kind of look, seeing all this stuff is kind of interesting to me because I don't know, like I'm coming at it from the direction of knowing more about modern day Sweden than past Sweden, other than like specific eras of history, you know, obviously like the great Northern war and, and stuff of that sort. But for the most part, I'm coming at this from the direction of like knowing what the end result looks like and looking back. And so all of these videos are, are sort of showing a, a step in that, in that progression ladder to me. Um, and it's a, it's a really interesting thing. I really love this channel. I've said this a million times. So go, you know, uh, like comment, support them. The, the weapons legends guys, they're, they're great. Um, and as always like comment, subscribe, help me keep building the channel over here and I will see you all next time.